environmental risks here. But let me get to the big news of the day. Yes, Bill Gates has just announced that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the largest private charity, is going to double in the next 10 years the amount of money, more than double actually, that it has given to childhood vaccines because they absolutely feel that they can save, save millions and millions of lives. They're going to go from $4.5 billion of the past 10 years to $10 billion for vaccines, vaccine development. He flat out told me, we will in our lifetime have a vaccine for malaria. I began by asking him, hey, you're a business guy. Where will the first chunk of the money go initially? Listen in. It's really in three categories. One is to increase the coverage of the vaccines we have uh, from 79% to get it up to 90%. The second is to take the vaccines that are already out and used in rich countries and get those available for poor children, uh, where it has even more impact. And then finally, which would be the largest category, is funding discovery of new vaccines. Um, malaria vaccine, where there's been good progress, TB vaccine, AIDS vaccine. Let's go to the U.S. deficit, the budget, the economy. You talked about this in your annual shareholder letter. What do you see as it pertains to looking forward and pulling ourselves out of this hole? Well, the economy is starting to come back. You know, I don't have the crystal ball that, that says, will it take two years, three years, four years to be uh, fully uh, back to where we were. I do think that continued generosity during this time makes sense. And the president committed to double aid. Um, you know, we're hopeful that will take place. Many countries like the UK have had substantial increases, even as they have a an even worse budget situation. You also talked about innovation in this letter, saying that that's what will really pull us out of things like big recessions. Is that, in essence, to say that it's really private enterprise that is the best job creator versus the government? Well, certainly innovation is how we can explain that 100 years ago we lived half as long, you know, our nutrition was terrible, our literacy rate was terrible. It's innovation. It's a mix. The government funded a lot of basic research, but really implementing that, getting the products out, uh, the private sector does most of that. And that's why in our foundation activities, we're partnering with companies. We call it creative capitalism, whether it's vaccine companies, food companies, banking companies, getting them to put some of their energy on, on the needs of the poorest. So the private sector, uh, that's a big part of where the expertise is. Uh, that's where uh, the, the economic improvement will largely come from. I find it so interesting to look at somebody like you who, in your previous life, I guess I could call it that, was a killer competitor on the business landscape. Yet, and I'm not meaning to make it sound like it was an overnight progression, but you've now progressed to really looking forward to this foundation and focusing solely on vaccines. Is the message that, you know, when you make a lot of money in the U.S. and you do really well, because this is what your friend Warren Buffett says, too, that you, in great part, owe much of that back to society? Well, certainly Warren believes that. I believe that. There's a thread of continuity between my work at Microsoft and my foundation work, which is investing in innovation. And, you know, the way you win market share there is by coming out with great software products. And so that's what Microsoft's all about. The way you win in this new world is by backing scientists who come up with new vaccines. And so my annual letter uh, that came out uh, early this week talks about innovation as the theme that, you know, I've always been about backing innovation. Now I've had to learn new areas. You know, there's some dead ends. We're willing to take risks. But it, it's not all that different. It's just uh, taking the resource of society that Warren uh, has been generous to us with and that I was lucky enough to have, and making sure they go back to the most neediest with the highest impact. Well, of course, Warren Buffett gave you $30 billion to your foundation, doubling its muscle. Uh, do you tell him in advance of an announcement like this, and what did he say? Well, Warren's always giving good advice, and uh, he's a trustee uh, for the foundation. He's the one who came up with the idea of doing an annual letter, and so I uh, showed him a draft of that and you know, talked about uh, this commitment. Uh, and. You know, he's, he's, um, his advice is amazing. Now, my letter, I'm not as funny as he is. I'm not as succinct <laughs> as he is. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're he, he's given me a lot of help. And you're, you're on Twitter now. I'm following you. What yes. do you think of that? Well, I want to uh, share with young people these issues because I think they care a lot. I want to get more feedback about things they're seeing they think I should know about. So I've got Twitter. I've got a website, uh, Gates Notes. 
and uh, Facebook page. So, you know, of course it makes sense for me to try to use the digital world to reach media. out. Yeah. Are you following anybody on Twitter? Oh, sure. I follow uh, uh, the Gavi Alliance that does vaccines. Mm -hmm. I follow a lot of interesting people. You know, there's kind of this back and forth where you meet new people and follow each other. Hey, look, he is using new media, Stuart, to get his word out. But, of course, the big news, he and the Gates Foundation will spend $10 billion in the next 10 years. They absolutely believe that they can eradicate, for example, polio, which used to be in hundreds of countries and now is really just in a handful of countries. So they're working to focus on that to save as many lives as possible. And he was quite clear he wasn't going to talk about business or too much in the political realm as well. He wanted to get this word out about vaccines. It's a classic Davos story. But... You know, as you saw, we pushed him on the economy a bit and talking about what he sees for the future. He's always pretty much optimistic. Stuart, live from Davos, I'll send it back to you.